Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can make your Discord bot tell jokes. All right, so um, this is kind of just like a test video. Um, I, don't, I don't really have the time to, you know, research and record any tutorials right now. So I'm just going to, um, well, I'm still gonna do a tutorial, I guess, but um, basically I'm just going to have my Discord bot here. It's a Java Discord bot using the Java Discord API, JDA. And uh, it's got a lot of stuff already just because it's a bot that I already use for my Discord community. And what I wanna do is extend it so that it has a scheduled task that tells a joke every hour or so using a public joke uh, API on the interwebs. So you may have noticed I'm in a bit of a different position than I usually am just because I got a new desk. So I'm working with a new setup right now. Um, it's really cool, it's a standing desk. Uh, you know, watch this. Isn't this just so cool? Watch. Okay guys, so let's get started here. Um, what I wanna do is, so so far the project, um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spring project. Okay, there we go. So um, you may notice some, a few things about this. Uh, there's, a different, there's a couple of different things I'm using here. First of all, I'm using Java Discord API, like I said, but I'm also using Java, I mean JDA Chutils, which is a fork of JDA Utils, which I used to make my tutorials with. Um, it's essentially a, util a utility library that goes along with JDA that allows you to do certain things like um, automatically add slash commands, um, buttons and support for buttons and menu stuff. And it's pretty cool. It's a cool utility uh, library that you can use within your Discord bots, your Java Discord bots. And uh, I'm using it here. But the most important thing is that uh, this may look very foreign because I'm using Spring. Uh, a lot of people are not familiar with Spring that watch my videos. so. Spring is essentially, it plays many roles, but it's a dependency injection manager thingy. Um, it has database support, so it allows you to you know, easily integrate with databases and work with them. Um, that's a really oversimplification. Um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff, but the primary thing that I'm using this for is for dependency injection, as well as, uh, like I said, interfacing with the database. And I'm currently using a MongoDB database for this uh, project here. So all of the information that I need to persistently store for my Cortex uh, bots, for my Cortex community, is stored in MongoDB. And this Java Discord bot is able to connect to that database and uh, work with it using these objects here. So all of these objects are essentially mapped to uh, database collections or tables in SQL. So yeah, simple introduction here. You don't need to be an expert on the entire project to understand what I'm doing here. At the end of the day, I still am using Java Discord API, so that's what really matters. And I'm gonna be showing you how you can use the Java Discord API along with Java 11 plus HTTP client to make an HTTP request to get a joke from the interwebs, okay? So this website was given to me by a, a person named Ash. He's a, um, a person that's been in our community for a long time. He's a, uh, a friend of mine. And yeah, he gave me this. It's a public API that allows you to get Chuck Norris jokes, which is really, really awesome. This is what we're gonna use to tell jokes with or get the jokes from. And yeah, so shout out to Ash. Thank you for that suggestion. Let's go ahead and see if we can implement it. So there's different joke categories apparently. So let's click this and open a new tab. So these are all the different categories of jokes, which is pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and not use that. Uh, oh, well, I guess we can we can use that. I guess what we could also do is make a command using the Java Discord API along with JDA Chutils that allows you to have a command that allows you to specify the joke category. So we can basically randomly select a joke from a joke category, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so all you gotta do is make a git request to this api.chugnorris.io slash joke slash random, and it'll give you a JSON representation of a joke. So we're gonna extract that from here. And uh, we don't really need the other information here. I guess it gives you an icon, which is cool. Chuck Norris, I assume, <laughs> yeah. Um, so cool. And the cool thing is, is we don't really need an API key or anything like that. So like I said, it's a public API. So let's go ahead and try using it. So I'll put that to the side. And what I wanna do is find a place for my schedule task. So this is the, the, let me close these other tabs here. So this class is called discordbotservice.java. 
And this is essentially the class responsible for the main creation of the bot, as well as injecting, and it also has all of the dependencies and commands pretty much of the entire project. Uh, they're all injected into this one class, and that's used to essentially instantiate the Discord bot to set up all the slash commands and all that stuff like that. So this is where you can find all of the main bot stuff. So right here inside of this init uh, method, we are creating the bot and that allows us to get an API field here. So we can use the JDA object to then use the Java Discord API anywhere that we can access this, all right? So I think this class will be the best place for me to have my schedule task. And then from that uh, schedule task, we will um, essentially grab jokes from a joke service that we're going to create, okay? So let's create a new service here in our services package. Like I said, you don't need to be an expert in Spring. Um, a service is essentially just a utility class. You can think of it as a utility class that does a specific function for you or a set of functions related to one thing or many things. Um, but that's how I like to think of it. So in this case, if it's a joke service, it's a class responsible for giving you jokes. Simple enough, right? And Spring will automatically inject that class or put an instance of that class into whatever class you want it to be injected into. In this case, it'll be the Discord bot service class. So within here, we're gonna make a simple public method. So public string get chuck Norris joke, no parameters. So now we want to make a get request to that API endpoint I showed you a second ago and then return it. Okay, so we can use HTTP client, HTTP client. I'll have a video specifically on the Java HTTP client uh, library if you're interested. It'll come out really soon after this video. So go make sure you look out for it. Import HTTP client, there we go, HTTP client dot new HTTP client. And what we want to do here is now make a request. So HTTP request, request is equal to HTTP request on new builder. So request builder. And then we want to set some information about the, the request that we're making. So we want to set the URL of the request or UI, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to set that to the, the endpoint that we grabbed from the interwebs. There we go. We're going to set the we're gonna set it as a git request. So just put git, there we go. And that should be all we need. Like I said, it's pretty simple. You don't need any authentication or anything like that in our API key. So you can just make a simple git request to this API um, or this endpoint. And then uh, it should give us a response with the joke in JSON. By the way, we need to do this actually, uri.create, oops, oops. Oh my gosh, I'm, there we go. Put that right. There, okay, that was hard. All right, so that should allow us to, so now we have a request, so let's go ahead and actually make the request. So we're gonna do client.send request. And now we need a body a body handler. So this is essentially a, a thing that lets you specify how you want the body to be returned to you. In this case, we want it as a simple string, a simple JSON string so that we can extract data from it in Java. So we're gonna do uh, HTTP response dot body handlers dot of string. And that will essentially tell it to give us a string, like I said. So then we can do HTTP response string uh, response is equal to client.send. And we need to handle an exception. Um, yeah, we'll add it to the signature. So we'll handle it outside of that. Okie dokie. And then from that, we can read information. So if the status code of the response is, it should be like 200 or something like that. If the status code is 200, then we know that it worked. So we can grab the information from it. So now we have to think about, uh, this is the information grabbed, right? How do we extract just the value from this JSON, this JSON string here, right? Um, I think I have a JSON library that comes with a spring specifically, so that should be helpful. But you know you can come up with your own way to grab it from here using you know substrings and whatnot available in the Java library. Um, but let's go ahead and see if I can figure out how to use the provided JSON or JSON JSON library. So I think we have Jackson. Yeah, we have Jackson in this, don't we? Jackson. Looks like we do have Jackson, I think. So with Jackson, you have an object mapper, or not? I guess I don't have Jackson. Okay, maybe I lied. I don't think I have a, a JSON library. So let me go ahead and download one from the interwebs. I'm just gonna go ahead and search um, Jackson Java. Okay, here we go. Here's the Maven dependency that we need. So I think the latest version is 2. Point, um, the latest version is 2.14. So that's what we'll specify in our palm.xml. So let's go back here and put that at the bottom. So 2.14. 
and that should give us Jackson, which is a library that essentially allows you to take string. Well, it can do many things, obviously, but the the, the thing that we're going to use it for is we're going to take a uh, a string in Java that has JSON text within it, and then automatically convert it. Um, we're going to extract data from it. You could ob you could convert it automatically into a Java object, but in this case, we only want you know one piece of data, which is the value of the joke itself. So we don't really need to do that. We're just going to extract the value from that uh, JSON object. Okay. It says block to mirror for repositories. Uh, that's weird. Well, I don't know what I did, but that seemed to have fixed it, I guess. So object mapper. There we go. Object mapper is equal to new object mapper. And so now we want to use the mapper. So object mapper dot uh, read tree. And this accepts many different things, but one of the things it accepts is a string. So we can do response dot body. Okay, so that'll take that string, the JSON string, and represent it internally within uh, Jackson. And so we want to grab this specific key called value as a string, okay? So to grab that, um, first of all, this read tree here, it returns a, uh, what's it? to return JSON node. So JSON node, node is equal to that. And then from node, import node, node dot uh, get. So we can pass in the field name, so value, and we want it as text. So that'll get it as text, obviously. So then uh, we'll store that into a string called joke. And uh, then we're going to return that. We could have just returned it right away, I guess. There we go. All right, cool. So that hopefully um, should make a get request to the API endpoint, give it back as JSON text. We're going to process, process the JSON text, and then we're going to grab the joke from it, and then we're going to return it from the get Chuck Norris joke method. And by the way, this 200 here means that the request was done successfully and everything processed well and a response was given back um, normally. Uh, if that's not given, if it's a different number, um, like a 400 or a 500 based number, then something went wrong. So if something does go wrong, if it's not 200, um, we're going to just return null. So if it returns null, that means that's that's how we know that something went wrong probably, okay? And we can run code differently depending on that. So anyway, we're going to annotate this class here as a service so that Spring will know um, that it can be injected into this class here, like I said. So up here or anywhere, we're going to do private final joke service joke service and now spring should automatically inject that which is sexy and now we're going to choose a place to put our task here our scheduled task so we're going to do it um here so scheduled this is how you uh, specify a scheduled task all you got to do is annotate a method with the scheduled annotation and then provide information about how you want to schedule it so we want to do a fixed delay so we're going to specify the amount of milliseconds that it's going to um, wait before repeating essentially, so that the delay time, okay? Or rate, fixed rate. Yeah, fixed rate, that would be the rate. So the delay is, the delay is how, many how long you wait. Actually, I have no idea. I don't know which the difference is, to be honest. But either, either way, we're gonna use fixed uh, rate. We'll see what happens. <laughs> then we're just gonna set it to one minute initially. So one minute, two milliseconds is what I'm searching on the interwebs. One minute, two milliseconds, and that should be, yeah, 60,000, right? So 60,000, and then uh, we're gonna make a method for that. So public avoid uh, tell joke, there we go. So inside of here, we're going to uh, tell a joke, tell a Chuck Norris joke. String joke is equal to joke service, and we're accessing that from above where we just declared it as private final joke service. So we're gonna do joke service dot get Chuck Norris joke and we want to make sure that uh, we can either add it to the method signature and it'll be basically be ignored in a way or we can uh, just actually handle it like a normal human being. So we can do try, boom, and then we're gonna catch it. If we catch it, we don't really need to do anything else. So we're just going to leave it. We'll print out the stack trace, there we go. So if the joke does not throw an exception, if the method does not throw an exception, then we got the joke. So we're gonna see if it's not equal to null. If joke is not equal to null, then we want to do, uh, we want to basically print out that joke to a specific channel on my Discord server. Um, but just for testing purposes, initially we're just going to print it out to the console. So 
joke, joke. Okay. Um, and then so that we know it's running, we'll do, oops, up here we'll say telling a joke. And that should happen every minute. Um, and we're gonna set initial delay, initial delay, Initial delay, we'll set that to a minute as well. So 60,000. So essentially what this will do is um, as the as the, the program starts up, as the Discord bot starts up, um, Spring is going to create all of these classes here. It's going to instantiate them rather. Um, Discord bot service will be instantiated. And when that happens, all of these services up here, these commands and these services that I have will be injected or these fields here will be set. In other words, they will all be set automatically by Spring because they're being injected using Spring dependency injection. And then also when that uh, class is instantiated, we're going to also set up, we're going to schedule a, um, a task here that I just lost. I don't know where I put it. Here it is, tell joke. So we're scheduling a method called tell joke to run after a minute after the program has started every minute. So wait a minute after it starts and then Tell the joke, wait a minute, tell the joke, wait a minute, tell the joke, all the way until the program is done running, okay? So let's go ahead and see if this works. We'll start the program now. Oh, actually, I need to I need to stop my Discord bot from already running. It's running on my VPS right now, so let me go ahead and SSH into that and turn it off. All right, I'm on my VPS now, so I just need to... So it's, it's running as a Docker container, so we want to figure out what the container ID is. So it's the app, so Docker kill or Docker stop, I think. Docker stop D1345 24. Okay, I'm gonna just copy it. That's painful. So stop that container. Okay, so now we can run it locally on our system. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Boom. All right, so it seems to be running now. So I'll see you in a second when, um, after a minute, when it starts telling a joke. Okay, we'll see if that works. What the fuck? It's been a minute for sure. What the fuck? So yeah, I don't know what wrong. Um, I don't know what was going wrong, but um, I waited a minute and it never happened. So I changed. I removed the initial delay and I changed it back to fixed rate because that that's what I did up here. Except this one does have an initial delay, so I don't know what the difference is. But either way, it is working, which is good for now. So. Uh, we can see that the joke is down here. It says, for years now, Chuck Norris has been trying to convince John Malkovich to co-star in his proposed comedy documentary, Killing John Malkovich. So, awesome. Thank you, Chuck Norris. Uh, so, yeah, we want to take that joke, essentially, and then print it out into a channel, like I said. So, let's figure out how we can do that. Um, so, usually when you do something like that, you're going to need to get the guild. And then with the guild, you can get the channel, the text channel, and then you can print it out or send the message from that. So like I said, we have this API field. So API dot to get to guild by ID, or we, we might be able to do get guild. And we already have a get guild method here apparently. So in my, this class here, I have a get guild method. So get guild, the source code of this is just, it's a just a preset. So essentially API dot get guild by ID. All right, guys, so something really weird is going on. So what I'm going to do is actually just make it as a command instead of like a, uh, a scheduled message that is sent into a channel every so often. I think that would be better from the user perspective. You know, they can create jokes on command if they want to, and they can also specify different categories for jokes. So what I'm going to do is go to commands. I'm going to make a new package called jokes. And we're going to make a new joke command. Joke command. So this will be a slash command. We're going to make it using the... Um, Chutil, JDA Chutils library like I told you about before. So I'm going to close all these things and I'm going to go ahead and uh, open one of my previous commands so I can use as a reference, you know what I mean? So we'll just try this one out. Just a random command so I know how to make a command. Uh, I don't think that one works actually. There we go, we'll do this one. So public class joke command extends slash command 
Okay, and then we're gonna need the joke service for that. So private final joke, joke service so that we can get jokes, right? And we're going to add a constructor parameter. So that's gonna generate a constructor for us and pass in these, the, uh, the joke service automatically. So Spring will inject that service into this class similar to how we were trying before. Then we're gonna implement the methods. So the execute method is where we specify the code that's gonna be run when we um, do the slash command. But in the constructor as well, we also need to specify stuff about the command. So this dot name, so the command name, we'll just call it joke. Um, this dot help, so um, get, um, get a chuck, chuck, chuck Norris joke. All right, so that will get chuck Norris joke, and then Inside of this, we're going to run the command. Um, so we'll just change this to event. All right, so event dot, oh yeah, so let's get the joke. So string joke is equal to, actually we'll just go back and copy this um, here to our scheduled thing. So we're just going to go ahead and copy all this or steal it, there we go, boom, and uncomment it out. So now we can just do event.getGuild, so that'll get the guild that the slash command was executed inside of. And then instead of sending it to a specific channel, we can just reply to the channel that, or we can just reply to the command actually. I think that would work better. So we don't even need to do this. We can just do event.reply, and we can say the message will be the joke itself, and then queue that, okay? And then we could also optionally set it as ephemeral. So if we set it to ephemeral, to true, this means that only the person who runs the command can see the, the command response. But in this case, I think it would be cool for everyone to be able to see the joke, not just the person who ran the command, okay? So that should set it up. I think that's all we need, um, except that, um, what's the problem here? Oh yeah, so let's make this a, Sir, or a component rather, so that'll be a component. So that means that Spring can pick it up and auto wire it. And now we'll go back up here. First of all, let's go ahead and delete this. We don't need this anymore. And uh, now instead of having this joke service inside of here, since it's already inside of the joke command, that's where we need it. We don't need it here anymore. So we'll just replace this with joke command because now we need to take that joke command class and register it as a slash command in our Discord bot. Joke command, there we go. So now that should be all we need. Now, um, uh, now I'm going to restart my bot and hopefully it may take a second. The command should now pop up so that I can try it out and see if it works. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what I did. Um, so apparently you can make a slash command guild specific so that it only works on a specific guild and that makes it work faster because, uh, when you have just a regular global command, it takes up to an hour apparently to propagate and be able to be used on discord, which is very annoying for testing. So I did four skilled only, and that alone did not help my situation. But then when I did a build dot await ready, that made it so that it immediately started working. So maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. And so I ran slash joke and it said Chuck Norris's penis is even bigger than that. So <laughs> there you go. So now you can run slash joke and it tells you a Chuck Norris joke. Upon leaving a public swimming pool, Chuck Norris then urinates in it. <laughs> like what the fuck? Um, but yeah, now we got Chuck Norris jokes right off the, um, whenever we want and, uh, cool. And what we can do is if we want to, we can have it so that we can, um, the user who runs the command can specify an argument, which is the category of the joke. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that though. Should I do that? Nah, that's a lot of work. Um, this already took long enough, but I challenge you guys to see if y'all can do that. You can make your own discord bot and see if you can make a, uh, a joke command like this and see if you can make it so that they can specify different joke categories to take the joke from. And yeah, pretty cool stuff. That was painful at first, but now that we made it a command and made it a guild specific, it worked pretty well. And yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, I look short right now, but uh, was, um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys want to see my new setup, then let me know. I can make a little short video on that if you're curious. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Oh yeah, wait, 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 before I go, make sure you join our Discord server so you can test out the command for yourself if you want to. And also just because it's a great programming community, you can get lots of friends, you can get um, help on programming stuff if you need help. Um, yeah, it's a great community. Make sure you join, link in the description below. And also if you wanna support this channel, then hit the join button below. You can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. 
or more if you want to. It's an easy way to support me and keep me uh, able to make videos for you guys and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's all I got. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe if you want to see more. And peace.